Welcome to the Kaizen booth here at IPC Apex Expo. Uh, delighted to be joined by Tom Forsyth. Good to see you, Tom. Good to see you, Trevor. Yeah, and uh, we're here to talk today about the Analyst 2 because you've, you've updated, you've had the Analyst in the market for a long time right. uh, as a, a process control tool. Um, but you've uh, you've made some upgrades to it recently. Uh, can you tell us what you've done? Yes, the Analyst has been a, a great success out of the market, really targeted toward, toward batch cleaning, mm -hmm. uh, process documentation and monitoring, and uh, is you know true to our nature at Kaizen, we're always listening to the customer. There's always a suggestion, mm -hmm. something that you've you know hadn't thought of. So we've we've made minor changes to the software over the years, and this was a time to kind of uh, really incorporate all that in to a, a base, you know, kind of not so much a redo, but a you know a reset the clock on on uh, a new addition, if you will. Right. So the really twofold. One on the software side, some some small you know improvements throughout the package. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the hardware side, taking an approach, because our tools tend to have a great, uh, long, useful life, mm -hmm. there's always the risk of, of some com uh, hard component, something in the display or something like that, uh, you know, uh, having a failure down the road five or longer years out. Right. Uh, the, we work this, this go around to get the, uh, to take a, a hardware agnostic approach, using a industrialized uh, computer, mm -hmm. screen display, so if, if that if that has a failure or something, it can be swapped out for another. You don't need to buy a whole new system, you know that sort of thing. So we think that gives some real value for our customers, because again, this is a, a kindred product to our PCS system, mm -hmm. and we have PCS users that have been that are running PCSs they bought ten and fifteen and twenty years ago. Okay. And so over that long run, some component is bound to, to fail. Well, on that system, we're able to do that, but we're we're saying, how can we make that more and more robust and be, be sort of, for the simpler things, hardware agnostic? And that this is the first step in that direction. Okay, so let, let's look at how you perform the measurement. You know, you're, you're saying in, in your literature here that you're using uh, sonic... Uh, velocity. Sonic velocity. So, so explain to us what sonic velocity is and how that works. Sonic velocity is essentially sonar. Okay. Okay, we've all okay. watched those movies from World War II with the ping and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. it, it is identical technology. Right. Okay, um, and what does it do? It's 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 sending a sound wave, mm -hmm. and it's going through a fluid medium, and uh, depending upon the density and the temperature of that medium, the temperature of course gets standardized. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you get it, it; it gets to the other side. Right. Okay, and since we know what the density of the fluid should be with a cleaning chemistry concentration of a given a particular product at a particular concentration, mm -hmm. you calibrate the system to do that. Now, not every technology can be measured by sonic velocity. Right. Um, and so we, throughout our tool offerings, we, we use different technologies. Sonic velocity is very simple and very robust, so we try to make that the best choice. Mm -hmm. How um, accurate is it? Oh, it's very accurate. It's it's uh, fractions of a percent. It's, mm -hmm. it's really quite accurate. Okay. And, quite uh, robust and reliable. Yeah, and what, what, what sort of range of um, temperatures do you, do you typically measure over? Most uh, most operations run at around 65C, that 140, 45 sort of range. That's most common. Yeah. Um, it, it can go up to, it's it's up to a 70 or 75C, you know, the mm -hmm. 160, 165. Things don't get much higher than that. Yeah. And we always try to be above um, the 120 area, which is more like 35, mm -hmm. 38C, um, and it's it's because just like as you, as we all know at home, you know if you wash your hands with cold water, they feel different than when you wash your hands in hot water. Absolutely, um, and that's true for darn near everything. Yep. I mean, there are some things where temperature does not help, mm -hmm. but they're the exception. Yeah, um, the rule is the temperature generally helps. It does, of course. Yeah. And so, and that's part of what the system's doing is saying, okay, I'm monitoring that temperature to make sure that you're at that prescribed temperature. Because mm -hmm. the other thing these systems do is they provide uh, automated data retention. Right. You know, we're collecting the data, we're retaining it, we're storing it in an easy to access mode. So if, if you get some audit or you get some question about a field failure a year later, right. you can say, all right, well, we scrubbed the cleaning, let's let's go check. Mm -hmm. Well, you can find that in seconds. Seconds. A minute, or, you know, you're, yeah. you know, yeah. tap, 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 and you're there. And you've got documentation to say, no, no, Mm -hmm. Temperature was square, concentration was square, process ran fine. Mm -hmm. We need to hunt somewhere else to, to uncover the root cause. Uncover the root cause. And that's, that's a, something that's of keen interest to people. Mm -hmm. 
that data re, that data collection and data retention thing. So you don't have a clipboard with a pencil with someone, you know, in my handwriting in particular, not very good, uh, scribbling on uh, you know some numbers that get, right. maybe are not always legible. Yeah. So there's there's keen interest in, in that, um, mm -hmm. even more so than we ever expected. Right. How many units do you have roughly in the, in the field? Oh, uh, scores, uh, hundreds. I mean, there's tons of these out in the field. Mm -hmm. they, there's we, we we ship lots of them every month. And so, do the ones that uh, the existing users that will they get? You know, when you get do software updates and things like that. Right. We we get... provide updates uh, to people. And again, now of course, as we were discussing but before we started. Many of our users are surprisingly uh, concerned about, maybe not surprisingly, mm -hmm. about the risks of the internet for mm -hmm. third-party tools like this being connected to the internet. Right. So while they come with with native, you know, automatic connect, you know, if you're connected to the cloud, it all you know seamlessly updates and all this stuff. Well, many organizations are uncomfortable with that. Yeah. So we've created alternate techniques. You know, to uh, to provide updates on a regular basis, and we don't. It's it's not a monthly thing. This is no. like Microsoft finding bugs every month. Yeah. This is all custom code that we've written and really, really robustly tested internally. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more the updates are generally new features, the occasional little glitch that that was discovered that gets corrected. Kind okay. Of okay. Now, obviously, Kaizen's a global company, so I mean, uh, presumably, it's available in a number of languages. Lots of languages. Um, the, you know the, the big four are you know Mandarin and German and Spanish, yeah. and as well as English, and they're all on there. Yeah. They're, they're all native to it, so yeah. that's just the selection. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, that's the update to the Kaizen Analyst Two. Tom, thank you for uh, telling us about it today. Thank you, Trevor. At Kaizen, we know it's the science that makes the difference. The right solutions happen when you care enough to ask the right questions. And we understand that your performance is directly related to ours. Science knows why it works, care knows why it's important.